हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट केस ऑन एक्टिव किडनी इंजरी इन ट्रोमा एंड बर्न्स starting with the uh, acute kidney injury it is a deterioration of renal function over as two days leading to accumulation of toxic waste and loss of uh, internal hemostasis acute kidney injury is common cause of organ failure in patients who survive initial after trauma and it is associated with poor outcome high mortality rates increased morbidity the mortality ranges around 7.3 to 62% depending upon the etiology Trauma patients are at risk uh, of acute kidney injury due to hypovolemia, hypoperfusion, direct trauma to renal injury, random hemolysis, nephrotoxic drugs in, uh, induced, or due to abdominal compartment syndrome. Uh, acute kidney injury can be uh, classified as perianal, intrarenal, or postrenal, depending upon the mechanism of injury. Perianal is usually due to reduced blood flow to the kidneys. It can be due to hypovolemic states like hemorrhage, GI loss, systolic heart failure, hypovolemia, medications like which are nephrotoxic. Intrarenal is damage to the uh, kidneys, tubules, glomerulus, or interstitium. And postrenal, where urine is uh, produced adequately, but there is obstruction to the outflow. Uh, there are various uh, definitions and classifications of acute kidney injury. But uh, none of them uh, define it uh, in a uh, proper manner. So it makes it difficult to stage and uh, make the comparison difficult. Rifle, Akin, and Kirigo are most commonly used criteria. Kirigo is most, uh, most commonly used. But the issue with this uh, criteria is that they <coughs> assume the renal function to be have a, having a steady state, which limits its applicability in critically in patients where it is not true. So coming to pathophysiology, physiology, it is multifactorial. There are multiple causes uh, which can lead to acute kidney injury. So today we will be discussing trauma and burns among these two. So acute kidney injury and trauma. Uh, so renal trauma, uh, usually genital urinary injuries are there, approx 10% of the total injuries. But uh, when uh, we come to kidneys, around 80 to 85 to 90 percent of the time, the kidneys are injured in blunt uh, trauma following the RBA crashes, falls, or assaults. Uh, acute kidney injury and trauma as such is not common, but if it develops, it has fatal complications. Incidence of uh, patients who are getting admitted to critical care with renal trauma is about 20 percent, and. <clears throat> It, ha it has been studied that it is an independent risk factor uh, for poor uh, outcome and mortality. Acute kidney injury post trauma increases the relative risk of death by 3.6 folds. So, this is a study, uh, a retrospective uh, from the trauma registry, which shows that patients who post trauma who present with hemorrhagic shock uh, develop HI uh, in an early phase within nine, uh, five days of trauma. And it has also shown that it is an independent risk factor for mortality. A similar study uh, was done in a trauma center in Ukraine. It was an observational study where 1,000 patients were studied, uh, which showed that patients who developed acute kidney injury post trauma had a higher mortality rate, and acute kidney injury is an independent risk factor in cases of uh, trauma. So, coming to the diagnosis. Uh, clinical evaluation of the patient, hemodynamic stability, uh, watchful for hematuria, urine analysis, continuous uh, 8 to 12 hourly uh, monitoring of hematocrit and hemoglobin, UHG KUB usually suffers. In patients who are hemodynamically unstable or who are having microscopic uh, or 
macroscopic hematuria with the not uh, responding to uh, volume resuscitation, CCT is uh, warranted and we should do it with delayed images. CCT is usually gold standard in such cases. So when do we suspect a high grade renal injury? Whenever there is gross hematuria, wherever there is microscopic hematuria with hypotension, wherever there is a significant mode of uh, injury or deacceleration, whenever there is seed belt marks, diffuse abdominal tenderness, direct flow to the flank, or lower rib or vertebral transverse process fracture. Uh, so, uh, breeding. So, grade one, where there is no laceration, there is subcapsular, uh, subcapsular hematoma or contusion. Grade two, where there is a laceration of less than one centimeter depth. Uh, and there is hematoma which is confined to perinatric fascia. Grade 3, where the laceration is more than 1 cm in depth. And there is act, uh, vascular injury or active bleeding which is confined to perinatric fascia. Grade 4 is when there is a laceration with pelvic involvement or intrapelvic disruption, segmental vein or artery injury, when there is active bleeding or when there is a segmental infarct. So it is classified as grade 4 and grade 5 is whenever there is a male artery laceration or devascularized kidney with active bleeding. So coming to management of uh, acute kidney injury and trauma, our goal is uh, to prevent bleeding, prevent mortality, nephron sparing uh, actions and avoiding complications. To achieve our goals, uh, surgery was uh, opted in the past but in the last decade, uh, there is clear transition towards non-operative approach uh, because of the accumulative knowledge about safety and outcomes in patients with acute kidney injury treated with uh, non-operative management as well as improved modalities of imaging and development of minimal invasive techniques. So uh, this is a study which has compared operative and non-operative management of renal trauma. It is a non-randomized uh, non retrospective cohort study uh, comparison across 13,000 patients. Uh, this study has concluded that uh, the patients who have uh, either grade 1 and 2 trauma or patients with high grade blood trauma and penetrating trauma can be treated with non operative management and the outcomes were good. So, uh, when do we think of renal intervention? Whenever the patient is hemodynamic instable. Whenever the patient is having hematuria, which is unresponsive to aggressive fluid resuscitation, or whenever there is grade 5 vascular injury or expanding or pulsatile perirenal hematoma. So, uh, in these cases, uh, surgery is warranted. Uh, Angioembolization, uh, it is a recent minimal invasive technique uh, where kidneys can be saved, nephrotomy is avoided. This is indicated in patients who are hemodynamically unstable with renal trauma, who are having an active, active hematoma of more than 25 mm of death, uh, 25 mm of death. Yeah, angioembolization can be done. Uh, to summarize this, whenever there is renal trauma, we have to maintain the hemodynamic stability, we have to maintain perfusion. After that, we have to look for hematuria, we have to monitor hemoglobin and hematocrit input volume. Uh, we have to look if the patient is stable, if there is a viable hematuria, then we have to uh, do a USG scan, which is sufficient uh, to grade the patient. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, he can manage conservatively with bed rest, antibiotics, and serial uh, monitoring of hemoglobin and hematocrit. Uh, if the patient is having uh, visible hematuria, is unstable, or having grade 4 or 5 uh, type of injury, we can do an angiography and selective angioembolization can be done. Uh, most of the patients improve with this strategy. If the patient is unstable or having vascular or parenchymal uh, injury or hemodynamically unstable, non responsive to uh, volume resuscitation, this warrants for uh, uh, renal exploration or nephrectomy. Coming to bones. Rifle classification system has been developed 
to more accurately categorize severity of renal dysfunction and has enabled investigators to better study outcomes of atria in critically ill patients, including burn patients. The risk of mortality can be linked to the severity of ATI based on rifle criteria and increased chances of death, especially in the patients evaluated as uh, rifle criteria under injury and failure. The types of acute kidney injury in one. According to the cause, there are three renal or functional cause because of the injury. perfusion, renal cause because of fibular glomus. And according to the early within three days and late after four to 14 days, the causes of early AKI is hypoperfusion, inflammation, damage associated molecular pattern, dysfunction, uh, cardiac dysfunction, hormone disorders, hemodynamic changes, and rhabdomyolysis. Causes of the late AKI are sepsis, fluid overload, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, nephrotoxic drug usage. These are the long-term effects of the severe burns on the kidneys that will land a patient in the chronic kidney disease and followed by the end-stage kidney disease. These are, this is the pathophysiology of the burn shock. In the burn, there is an inflammatory mediator release, such as the histamine, radicanin, sertorin, prostaglandins, tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1, and vasectomy that will cause the cellular shock and that will land the that will cause burn shock. The release of the inflammatory mediator will cause systemic inflammatory response that will cause the microvascular changes such as the increased vascular permeability, increased hydro hydrostatic microvascular pressure, and that will cause the increased extracellular fluid and that will cause the edema. And these intravascular or these microvascular changes will cause the hemodynamic changes and will cause the hypovolemic shock and burn shock. The risk factors for the API in burn patients is such, uh, such a high age. Chronic hypertension, diabetes mellitus, burn injury extent and or mechanism, inhalational injury, presence of multiple organ failure or sepsis and high aperture score and SOFA score. Monitoring. Urine output for assessment of the homeostasis. Serum creatinine for the evaluation of glomerular filtration. NDL for the assessment of tubular injury. Furosemide stress test and major renal function reserve for determining the renal function reserve. A tissue inhibitor of the metallinoproteinase and Ig or insulin-like growth factor binding protein 7 for monitoring the system stress. These are the biomarkers of the renal injury. NGL, time of increase within 3 hours and peak after 6 hours. Cystatin C, 3 to 6 hours, time of increase and peak after 48 hours. In 1, after 6 hours, time of increase and peak of increase after at plus 48 hours. Management. Fluid resuscitation, resuscitation, early recognition and treatment of sepsis, hemodialysis, and nutritional support. Fluid is estimation and administration. Estimation of percentage of body surface area of burn is the first step when managing a patient. The wellness rule of nine and the lunt and broader chart in pediatric patients and the rule of palm can all be used to estimate the body surface area. During the body surface area estimation, only deep partial thickness burns and the full thickness burns are calculated for fluid administration. Superficial partial thickness burns are not included. Numerous formulas for fluid resuscitation have been proposed. However, the formula given by Baxter and Shires at the Parkland Hospital, referred to as Parkland formula, is the most commonly followed universally using the ringer lactate up to 4 ml per kg per percentage of total burn surface area in the first 24 hours, half during the first 8 hours and the rest over the next 16 hours. And the time is estimated from the time of injury and in case of delayed presentation, a more rapid fluid administration may be required. Early and adequate resuscitation is important to prevent the renal failure, organ dysfunction and death. An intravenous route is preferred. Fluid management and resuscitation and point in severe burn patients. If the patient is mechanically ventilated, Pulse pressure variation algorithm is used to guide the fluid for the fluid management. And if the patient has picocatheter and PPV is unreliable, then the uh, global end diastolic volume indicator, indicator is algorithm is used to guide the for the fluid resuscitation. And if the patient is, has no catheter or uh, global end diastolic volume indicator is not reliable and PPV is not available, fluid resuscitation is guided by the urine output algorithm. Early recognition and treatment of sepsis. Infection is the most frequent complication after severe burn and has a propensity to progress into sepsis than septic shock. 
and multi organ dysfunction syndrome sepsis is the leading cause of mortality in adults and pediatric one patients rate of sepsis related death are 15 to 84% in adult one patients and oh, in adult one patients and 55% in pediatric one patients improving outcome is in acute care depends on early detection of infection to allow prompt interventions diagnosis of sepsis in severe one is uniquely challenging because of the otherwise typical clinical signs are marked by the hypermetabolic state and systemic inflammation induced by the burn itself so so management of the early, uh, management of sepsis in early, in burn patients are after fluid resuscitation and stabilization antimicrobial therapy appropriate intravenous uh, antimicrobial therapy should preferred by to be started within 1 hour and antibiotic selection must be individualized and include one or more broad spectrum antibiotic that covers the most likely pathogen based on the data from the local antibiogram most cases of sepsis in burn patients are secondary to inf uh, secondary to infected burn wounds pseudomonas aeruginosa and methicillin resistant staphylococcus are most common isolated organism causing the infection in burn patients however several variable that must be considered when selecting an antibiotic regimen include the epidemiological factors patient history pre existing disease reason recent infection prior use of antibiotics immunosuppressed status drug allergy and clinical presentation septic shock should be treated with at least two antibiotics of different classes the anatomic site of the infection can provide clues as to pathogen type and antibiotic penetration once pathogen identification and sensitivities are known antibiotic deescalation is recommended the management of sepsis secondary to fungal or viral infection follows the same principles and systemic antifungals or antiviral must be administered respectively the choice of antifungal agent must be tailored to cover the most prevalent pathogens in the local burn unit empirically triazoles can be used in stable patients while liposomal amphotericin b or iconocandins are preferred in the presence of hemodynamic compromise severe infections or prior exposure to triazoles duration of antifungal is variable at least 2 weeks after ob obtaining negative blood cultures invasive fungal infections require aggressive surgical treatment to limit the propagation of the infection and a longer duration of antifungal therapy vasoactive therapy vasopressors therapy is recommended in patient who fail to reach the resuscitation target despite the fluid administration and non epinephrine is the first vasopressor that should be used if another vasopressor needs to be added either vasopressin or epinephrine can be considered dopamine can be used in the patients with a low risk of cardiac arrhythmias and preferably after reaching aortic volumes continuous hemodynamic monitoring is mandatory vasopressors should be titrated to achieve tissue perfusion using the lowest dose possible in if hypotension is refractory systolic blood pressure remains less than 90 mmhg for more than 1 hour despite fluid resuscitation and vasopressor adrenaline insufficiency must be considered in these cases a dose of hydrocortisone should be administered source control after fluid resuscitation hemodynamic stabilization and initiation of systemic antibiotic therapy control of the source of infection should be performed in, in timely manner debridement of the infected and necrotic areas until healthy viable tissue is found intravascular devices such as arterial line or central venous catheter suspected to be the source of infection should be removed abscess soft tissue or abdominal abscess are drained using the most favorable method surgical debridement open drainage percutaneous drainage abdominal catastrophes bowel ischemia intestinal perforation with peritonitis volvulus generally will require surgical exploration hemodialysis continuous renal replacement therapy the basic of the basic principle of action of crd is the elimination of inflammatory mediators urea creatinine and uremic toxin with the maintenance of water and electrolyte balance it depends on four physical principle ultra filtration convection diffusion and adsorption CRD has a capacity to eliminate inflammatory mediator depending on the types of filter used to up to 30000 to 50000 deltons so the indications for hemodialysis for hemofiltration renal and non renal renal when there is auditory renal failure or messy myoglobinuria in electric burns non renal such as systemic inflammatory response syndrome to eliminate the inflammatory mediators sepsis septic shock refractory hyperpyrexia correction of electrolyte imbalance congestive heart failure not responding to diuretics ards from intoxication prevention of the tumor lysis syndrome so the this, this is the study for the renal replacement the it the study shows that a timely initiation of renal replacement therapy with an individualized preference towards continuous mode at relatively higher than recommended dose has become standard practice in critical ill burn 
according to this we conclude that cbvh is an appropriate tool for the treating acute renal failure with lower incidence of vascular complication than uh, continuous uh, arteriovenous hemodialysis the nutritional support in pay burn patients energy requirement are high and adequate nutritional support is critical to the outcome infusion with glucose may be associated with inhibition of lipogenesis increase in the oxidization of the glucose and the glycogen deposits increase the catecholamines increase consumption of o2 and increase production of co2 so the use of the glucose only is advisable in the presence of respiratory failure and patients on mechanical ventilation on the other hand combined glucose lipid system has many advantages less metabolic overload compared to infusion of a single substratum the supply of the essential fatty acids the diminished frequent frequency of hyperglycemia and hepatic stenosis and reduce the production of co2 and consumption of o2 Thank you. दीपक हेलो हेलो यस हेलो दीपक हां सर दीपक एंड आस्मा या यू मेंशनड अबाउट द फ्यूरिसमिक स्ट्रेस टेस्ट सो कैन यू इलैबोरेट अबाउट दैट टेस्ट हाउ हाउ व्हेन यू शुड परफॉर्म एंड व्हाट आर द क्राइटेरिया इट शुड फिट बिफोर परफॉर्मिंग द टेस्ट फॉर द पेशेंट You got my question. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Asma and Deepak. Yes, sir. Your first one is stress test and measured renal function reserve. Yes, sir. So first one is stress test is usually uh, done done for prognosis in cases of uh, acute kidney kidney injury. Uh, So in patients who are, uh, it is uh, divided into whether the patient is new to furosemide or uh, whether the patient is uh, uh, on the furosemide. Usually, uh, if the patient is new, one mg per kg of IV dose is given as a bolus, and if the patient is not furosemide new, one point five mg per kg of, of uh, IV dose of furosemide is given. So we have to look for the outcome uh, in two hours. So, if it is more than 200 ml, it will be a patient who has passed the uh, furosemide stress test. And if it is less than 200, it has failed. So, it helps us in differentiation between the pre-renal and uh, intrinsic uh, or uh, intrinsic renal failure. So, it will help us to um, uh, differentiate and stage the patient. Uh, 
now i request dr gunadhar sir to please uh, uh, give his uh, important points on this topic no uh, i think uh, deepak and uh, asma has presented very nicely so no further uh, major discussion point here uh, the only thing is both the trauma and uh, burns basically they are considered to be a spectrum of uh, you can say sars severe sars response where the kidney tissue is being uh, hit because of the severe sars response so so the main aim is to prevent the sars response in the early stage so these patients they require uh, good uh, feeling pressures they require the inflammation to subside and they require adequate hydration uh, elevation of the blood pressure maintaining the peripheral perfusion and of course the infection control and uh, all these things are the key to manage the acute kidney injury so early and early aggressive hydration is uh, very very important in this point and uh, one should actually uh, use all the static and uh, you can say the dynamic parameters of fluid responsiveness and of course burns where you need actually a, a very good uh, uh, means you can say the feeling pressure actually you need to feel the patient properly uh, so that uh, that should not be any uh, like uh, intravascular hypovolemia so that actually leads to the this uh, kind of acute kidney injury and of course there is also the, there are a lot of uh, direct uh, toxins which can cause this kidney injuries actually so because of this inflammation so so every uh, step the assessment should be focused on proper hemodynamic management your uh, if you have a ultrasound you have to screen uh, and say see about the lung about the heart about the peripheral perfusions about the output and uh, right decisions at the right time not all the burns and such, uh, your trauma require antibiotic uh, your therapy actually most of them are actually initial 24 hours uh, majority of the burn zones are actually sterile so do not use unnecessarily overly use of uh, a broad spectrum antibiotic so you have to judge and uh, you have to very much judicious about your antibiotic therapy also and uh, avoiding the tox toxins particularly major toxins like uh, the insects and other things which also leads to the secondary kidney injury also should be like taken the priority so uh, whatever i think the recent literature and of this uh, published data actually so i suggest to go through all those uh, literatures and uh, then as per that the burn patient should be managed so categorizing the patient mild to moderate to severe burn degree of the uh, burn area injury like how much the percentage of burn area and the extent of the burn area also like whether it is a superficial uh, whether it is a superficial uh, or you can say the grade 2 or say third is the third category is the deep dermal or the fourth category is the most severe burn so most severe burns are the patient where the acute kidney injury is more severe so categorizing the burn patients and appropriately triaging them similarly with the trauma cases also so it is it is very very uh, important for the uh, you can say the outcome purpose actually but uh, out of that most of the things are being well covered and uh, all these burns and trauma they are to consider or assessment and reassessment should be done at regular intervals so they are basically considered to be uh, like the burns are considered to be like poly trauma patients only so whatever the, your uh, initial primary survey should be same for both the patients like a b c d e airway with uh, your cervical spine control breathing with ventilation circulation with hemorrhage control in that manner only if somebody has to assess the primary survey and going for the secondary survey and also doing the tertiary survey so every time assessing and reassessing and of course not to forget the adjuncts so what are the adjuncts to the primary survey in secondary survey also that they have to uh, take care of all these things and kidney injury is always a secondary insult so if you manage the primary pathology if you manage uh, the uh, volume status particularly then uh, you can at least uh, 50 to 60 percent cases prevent the acute kidney injury in such kind of things. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving your all uh, important points on this uh, topic. Uh, just a single point to add: see, all the patient on the in burns and trauma won't go to dialysis. The thing is that the something called as the reserve of the kidney. 
if a patient is a long standing having a kidney disease the chances of the reserve is less and such people may go into the dialysis uh, very fast they may require dialysis so the thing is that you have to categorize the patient you to understand that if the reserve is less the hydration the part of sepsis control everything has to be done in a proper way if the patient is very young and the kidney has a good reserve then the chances of the recovery also is more with the resuscitation points and even the sepsis controls so with this as there are no any other questions we can conclude our topic today okay thank you